Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I have a really exciting video for you all. So this past weekend, I went to Philadelphia for the VGC Regional Championships that were to kick off the season, and I ended up winning the entire competition. There were over 370 players in the Masters Division, which is a huge turnout for uh, a regional especially, and there were 9 rounds of Swiss with a top cut of 16. So I went 7-2 and two in the Swiss rounds, uh, was seeded 12th in the top 16, advanced onto the elimination bracket, and then won all my matches in the elimination round, uh, most notably beating Wolfie Glick in the finals. I have a lot of battle videos saved from there, so if you guys want to see that, definitely show your support for the video, like this one, and I'll do my best to bring as much as I can in the upcoming days. But I have a ton of content, which is really exciting, especially because you actually can't save battle videos from tournaments anymore. But fortunately, I was able to use my capture card, and I have a ton of great footage, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, like I said, uh, this video is an analysis of the team that I used to win the regional championships, and it's a pretty cool team, I think. It's definitely my favorite team of the season, and I'm pretty excited to show you guys. If you have followed my previous videos, uh, you'll know that I went to the 2014 World Championships this year uh, after getting an invite by placing third at Worlds last year, and I brought a team that revolved around Gothitelle, uh, but used other Pokemon like Hariyama, Kangaskhan, Ferrothorn, Salamence, and Rotom He. So, at Worlds I finished with a 4-2 record, I was one win away from making it into the top 8, and I finished 18th there. So, I f kind of felt like I did not do as well as I really would have liked, especially after placing 3rd last year. And, you know, going into this season, I knew that the rule set would be same for Fall Regionals in the Fall season. So, I really liked the core that I had for Worlds, especially Gothitelle, as you see as the first Pokemon here. Uh, and, I decided I would stick with that, but... Kangaskhan and Ferrothorn weren't working as well as I would have liked, so I decided I'd find better synergy with the team, and I ended up with Mawile and Ludicolo. So the entire team I'll quickly go through is Gothitelle, Hariyama, Mawile, Rotom Heat, Ludicolo, and Salamence. The EV spreads are all in the description below, and now I'm going to go through each one, describe its role, its function, and significance on the team. So let's start off with Gothitelle. Now I use Gothitelle to mainly set up Trick Room and to use its ability Shadow Tag. You see, with the sassy nature and uh, it and the EV spread that I have for Goth, it survives Choice Specs uh, Dark Pulse from Modest Hydreigon 100% of the time. 244 special defense and 252 HP is needed for that, but that's a very important attack to survive. It's the exact same Goth to Tell spread I used at Worlds, and I knew that Specs Hydreigon would be very popular there, which is why I decided to keep uh, the same kind of EV spread. I actually run uh, Rest with Chesto Berry instead of, you know, Protect or Citrus Berry and Leftovers. Uh, that's because I really like it when Gothitelle can, say, take an attack like that Dark Pulse, heal back with Rest, and then Gothitelle's partner can KO the opposing Pokemon, like Hydreigon. So, a lot of the times I would lead with Hariyama and Gothitelle, fake out Trick Room the first turn, and then Close Combat Rest the following turn to heal back all my HP and keep my Shadow Attack lock. As for the rest of the moves, Trick Room obviously to set up Trick Room, uh, Psy Shock, Mainly because I use Tickle as well, and Tickle is a really interesting attack because you decrease your opponent's attack and defense, and that compares really well with Hariyama and Mawile, both which are physical attackers that have really strong attack stats. So, Got to Tell is really what this team revolves around. Even if you don't use a Trick Room mode, you can lock your opponent in, and one common mode I like to use a lot was Salamence and Got to Tell. Uh, it's just such a central Pokemon, and it's definitely, I think, the best Trick Room user of VGC 2014. The next Pokemon is Hariyama, and I think Hariyama was one of the more interesting Pokemon I brought to Worlds, and I've been using this season. Uh, thanks to my team building partner Alex Gomez, uh, also known as Poke Alex, he came up with the Hariyama idea and we kind of worked off it for Worlds. And the EV spread is really one of the coolest EV spreads I've had for a Pokemon in VGC. It does really everything. With 62 HP, 100 defense, and 244 special defense, it survives modest Spex Draco Meteor from Hydreigon, and Jolly, Adaptability, Close Combat from Mega Lucario, so two of the most powerful attacks. And 98 attack actually allows it to one-hit KO Kangaskhan with no HP investment 100% of the time, which is awesome. I had four speed EVs mainly, mainly because uh, the four were left over, it wouldn't go into any stat, and I decided since I revealed my Hariyama in my previous team report, uh, maybe, you know, just having four would allow me to outspeed any in case anyone else decided just to run zero. Uh, obviously it wasn't very necessary, but it wasn't that big of a deal, might as well put it to some use in case there was some crazy scenario where it could work out. Uh, I used Brave with Citrus Berry um, and Guts. You know, a lot of Hariyama you see tend to run maybe a Salt Vest or, you know, a Flame Orb, Toxic Orb. I didn't want any of that. Citrus Berry, in combination with the bulk that I had, allowed me to tank attacks. I'd, you know, be able to heal back with the Citrus Berry. And it just was really bulky. 
And I like Guts because it allowed me to switch into will o -Wisp, especially on, you know, when they would try to will o -Wisp the Mawile, and I'd be able to get a free attack boost, which was really awesome. A lot of people also just kind of mindlessly will o -Wisp the Hariyama, and then I would just get a free boost. And of course, it also kind of allows you to take advantage of luck. For example, I got paralyzed by a Thunderbolt, and that allowed me to actually, you know, take advantage of that using Guts. For the moves that I had, Fake Out, Knock Off, Close Combat, Rock Slide, Fake Out is self-explanatory to help Got the Tell set up Trick Room, Close Combat as its main means of offense, mainly because it's such a powerful attack with Stab, and like I said, it can one-hit KO Kangaskhan, which is awesome. Knock Off is mainly to hit Ghost types and Dark types, uh, namely Edge Slash. Now, it's really good against Age of Slash because uh, this Hariyama is min speed, so Age of Slash is actually faster no matter how slow it is. Uh, so a lot of times I would lead Hariyama and Gatatel, and since my Gatatel was so especially defensive, it could take a Shadow Ball, I'd be able to knock it off after Age of Slash switches into Sword form, then Gatatel would be able to set up a Trick Room and consecutively heal with a Rest. So you can kind of see the synergy with Hariyama and Gatatel there. For my final move, I had Rock Slide. I originally had Helping Hand in this slot for Worlds, but I like Rock Slide more because I had a Charizard Y issue, especially as a Mega Mawile user, and I felt like it was just better to have a, another means of offense. Rock Slide's a great attack, especially when you're going first, because of course you have the flinch possibility. So Helping Hand really helped me only once or twice at Worlds, and Rock Slide in the end was really, really clutch at Regionals. I faced several Charizard Ys, as you'd expect, uh, Charizard Y is picking up popularity, and it paid off. So, Hariyama, a great call. I used it because it's more offensive than most of your fake out users, namely Scrafty. Uh, it can take basically any attack uh, and it can still deal huge amounts of damage. And I really love it. You guys should definitely try a Hariyama if you need a good, strong fighting fake out user. So the next Pokemon is Mega Mawile. And uh, Mega Mawile should not be a surprise to see on this team. I originally had Kangaskhan as my Mega user, but Mawile is just too powerful on their Trick Room. And combined with Tickle from Gothitelle, uh, you'll notice that the Mawile is actually not min speed. I ran admin, uh, max speed at, well, 31 IV uh, with zero speed EVs, just so Mawile would be faster than Gothitelle. Uh, that means in Trick Room, the Gothitelle would actually go before Mawile, and Gothitelle would be able to Tickle, then Mawile would be able to use any of its attacks. I ran a moveset of Sucker Punch, Rock Slide, Play, Rough Protect, did not opt for Iron Head because I really needed Rock Slide and I wanted Sucker Punch as well. I did not run any complicated EV spread on this. Uh, you guys may have seen Ray Rizzle's Mawile spread, which actually runs minimal attack and focuses on the special defensive side, but as a Trick Room user, you really want to maximize your turns of Trick Room, and by doing that, you want to get as much damage off as possible. And I figured I'd just rather go with max attack with that because that means I can maximize Mawile's damage output, and in combination with Tickle, can basically one hit KO anything that doesn't resist attack. So, for example, a Tickle plus a Rock Slide on Rotom Heat was a one hit KO, Tickle plus Play Rough was a one hit KO on anything that didn't resist it, and Tickle plus, you know, even Sucker Punch on things that weren't very defensively built uh, allowed me to pick up the one hit KO on stuff like Gardevoir and Edge of Slash, which was really, really cool. So, Mega Mawile. In my eyes, the best Mega right now, and if you guys are attending any more VGC 2014 tournaments, you better have a good way to beat Mawile, because otherwise it's going to run over your team. However, Mawile is kind of weak outside of Trick Room, which is why I had Trick Room specifically on this team, and it worked out so well. Uh, got to tell Mawile was such a deadly duo. Speaking of ways to counter Mawile, the next one is Rotom Heat. Now this Rotom is very, very bulky as you can tell by the EV spread. Uh, it's still the same, exact same uh, Rotom I actually brought to the World Championships with 252 HP, 164 Special Defense, and Calm Nature. That allows it to survive a Spec Draco Meteor from Modest Hydreigon. You'll notice a lot of the Pokemon are built to survive that attack, mainly because it's basically the most powerful special attack you see around in VGC. So, that allows it to survive the Draco Meteor, 68 defense there allows it to survive the Jolly Close Combat from Mega Lucario, not that common of attack, but one that I still decided it would be good to, you know, EV it to survive. Uh, 20 special attack, 4 speed. I wasn't really scared of the Rotom Mirror match, because if I were to face a Rotom Wash, I would just switch into Ludicolo or Salamence. I would never keep a Rotom Heat in on a Wash, so I didn't really feel the need for extra speed EVs. Rotom Heat is... In my opinion, the best way to counter Mawile outside of Trick Room with Overheat, Willibus, uh, ability to burn it, and then Thunderbolt as your another means of stab. You know, typical Rotom Heat set, but really good. Since I had Citrus Berry already on the Hariyama, I opted for Safety Goggles just to beat Amoongus completely. Got the Tell plus Rotom Heat was so fun to use against Amoongus because you can just switch in the Rotom Heat. They think, oh, I can take an Overheat and then Spore you, and then they just aren't able to spore you, and then you can will o -wisp through their uh, Rage Powders as well, which is great in hitting physical attackers, which a lot of Amoongus teams like to build around. So, Rotom Heat, one of my favorite Pokemon. I used to like Rotom Wash, but I think Heat is the better variant now, especially as it can counter Mega Mawile so well. 
Next Pokemon is a Pokemon that can actually give Rotom Heat a lot of trouble, Ludicolo. So I replaced Fire Throw with Ludicolo because I wanted a better way to improve my rain matchup, and I decided Ludicolo is a great Pokemon for that. Uh, I ran, I believe is actually Blake Hopper's Ludicolo spread. Blake finished, I think, 11th at Worlds. Uh, he's one of the top American players, and he had a pretty great Ludi spread. It was Assault Vest, and it only had 4 Special Defense, but it still allowed it to take basically any attack. Uh, 84 Defense EVs, 148 Special Attack EVs, and 20 Speed for the, uh, just to outspeed other Ludicolos. Pretty cookie cutter set, fake out Scald, Giga Drain, Ice Beam, opted for a Scald over Hydro Pump because I hated Hydro Pump's accuracy, and Scald was really clutch. Uh, with Scald, you can easily predict a lot of the times. For example, in the finis finals excuse me, against Wolfie, I predicted his guard chomp to switch to Mawile, and I Scalded and did over 50% and got the burns. So, Scald as 100% accuracy is a really great move, and by using it, you mitigate your chances of luck, and you increase his burn chance, which can uh, really help out throughout the day. Especially as even Willowis accuracy is not 100. Giga Drain is a great way just to heal yourself and to, you know, hit super effective on water type Pokemon like Rotom Wash and Politoed. Ice Beam for those pesky dragon types like Salamence, Hydreigon, and Garchomp. Speaking of pesky dragon types, that comes to our last Pokemon, Salamence. So, this is also the same Salamence I brought to Worlds. Choice Specs, Max Special Attack and Max Speed, Modest Nature, with two Fire type attacks and two Dragon type attacks. Now, I ran Modest Hydra Salamence, excuse me, uh, because. Pretty much all Hydreigons guns you see are modest as well, so Salamence outspeeds that by just a bit. I wasn't really afraid of running into timid Hydreigons, guns, and even if I did, uh, say I led Salamence and got to tell and they had timid Hydreigon, they would Dragon Pulse or Draco Meteor, lock themselves in, and then I would just set up Trick Room and then bring in Mawile the following turn. So, uh, the really cool thing about this team is even if you lose a Pokemon, if you set up Trick Room, Mawile gets a free switch in and can instantly sweep, which is really amazing. I opted with both. Fire Blast and Flamethrower and Dragon Pulse and Draco Meteor because I didn't want to take the risks of missing. I wasn't really uh, keen on using moves like Hydro Pump, Rock Slide, or Stone Edge because my team really didn't need it. You know, I had Rock Slide on Hari Omelette and Mawile ready to counter the Charizards. Uh, Hydro Pump's accuracy is so low and it's, I'd rather just Draco Meteor or Dragon Pulse a Rotom than uh, Hydro Pump. It. So I opted for the accuracy and in the end it paid off as a lot of the times it allowed me to make the safer play, didn't have to risk missing. So in the end, that's my team. I've got Gotta Tell, Ariyama, Mawile, Rotom Heat, Ludicolo, and Salamence. I'd say the team mainly revolves around Gotta Tell and Mawile. You kind of use Hariyama or Ludicolo to fake out and set up the Trick Room, but I often led actually with Salamence on Gotta Tell as well to uh, maybe get a big KO off, get the Intimidate off, as of course you see I have two Intimidators in Salamence and Mawile, and that in combination with Gotta Tell is uh, the Shadow Tag and Tickle, you know, there were so many times where I just locked my opponent in and they wouldn't be able to do anything because their attack would be so low. In top 4, I actually got my opponent's Mega Mawile to minus 5 attack through Intimidates and Tickles, which was absolutely hilarious. And Rest makes it a lot easier for God to tell to stay around for a bit longer. Even if I didn't have the Chest of Berry, sometimes I would rest just to keep the Shadow Tag lock in, because Shadow Tag is such an amazing ability. Uh, Rotom Key is one of those Pokemon that doesn't really need Trick Room to operate. Neither does Ludicolo or Salamence. You know, the first three Pokemon in God, uh, Hariyama, and uh, Mawile really like Trick Room, but the other three kind of don't mind it, and even outside of Trick Room be able to sweep, but say, you know, Trick Room went up, these Pokemon are still a bit slower than the more common Pokemon, for example, Ludicolo and Rotom Heat are slower than Pokemon like Kangaskhan, Garchomp, Hydreigon, etc. Uh, and of course, Mawile was such a good Mega, with Tickle, Rock Slide, Play Rough, and the proper support, namely from Got to Tell, it was just so powerful. So Mega Mawile, really my best bet for Mega Evolution right now. And yeah, that's basically it for the team, you know, it's kind of standard. In terms of uh, some of the Pokemon, I think Hariyama and Guy's Tell were two of the more unique choices. Uh, my EV spreads, not exactly the most creative, especially in Salamence Small Wild, but I really didn't feel like there was much need for incredible EV spreads, uh, mainly because, like I said, this team is designed to really do heavy offense while keeping as much bulk as possible. If you guys want to give it a whirl, definitely try it out. I'm not sure whether I'll bring the same team to Texas, but I'll see. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you to anyone who supported me throughout the weekend and said congratulations. I really appreciated it. And if you don't follow me on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, whatever, definitely do that so you see how my run at Texas Regionals is this weekend. Anyway, that's it for this team analysis, guys. I hope you liked it, and I'll see you next time. Peace.